Hello and welcome back to Big Fish Little Fish Aquatics. So today we're going to be looking at GH, KH and PH and what you need to know about them. So let's do this. So GH, also known as general hardness and sometimes referred to as your water hardness, at a basic level it means the measure of the salts in your water and in particular it focuses on calcium and magnesium. At this point it's worth pointing out that GH is not usually measured in your saltwater aquarium as you would typically use RODI water to prepare your salt mix and the actual salt mix that you put into that water restores the minerals. GH is important as fish have a natural ability called osmoregulation and in layman's terms it is the process of the fish balancing the salts and water in their body versus the water in your aquarium. And this is why your freshwater fish won't survive in salt water and vice versa why your saltwater fish won't survive in freshwater. GH provides electrolytes which help with things like digestion, resistance to disease, bone and muscle growth so you can see it's really important. Some fish do not do well if the general hardness is not right and it's worthwhile researching the fish that you wish to get in your aquarium just to make sure that the water that you have available in your tap is acceptable. However, similar to salt water, if you really wanted to keep a fish such as a discus which normally appreciates a uh, general hardness of a degree between 3 to 8 and you have a GH in your tap between 12 to 20 degrees, you could use RODI water and then remineralize that water to the correct levels. So KH, which stands for carbonate hardness and it's sometimes known as total alkalinity or your acid neutralizing capacity. So KH is a completely different measurement to your general hardness or GH as KH measures the bicarbonates and carbonates in your aquarium's water. KH is really important in order to protect your aquarium from having pH swings as these can stress and kill your fish. The best analogy I can think of is to think of KH as the ozone layer that protects the earth from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. So KH neutralizes acids in your aquarium to prevent pH swings. The issue is acid compounds are produced in your aquarium all the time and the main culprit is actually the beneficial bacteria that lives in your filter. As they convert ammonia into nitrite and nitrate, which are acidic, these acids eat away at the KH and in turn become neutralized. But once your KH is depleted, they will then cause your pH to drop. It's worth pointing out that for saltwater aquariums, if you have corals, these use carbonates to build their exoskeletons. So you'll also need to be extra vigilant and keep an eye on your KH levels. So in order to monitor your GH and KH levels, what you're going to need is a test kit. And uh, what I do is I'll put a link down in the description below of the test kits that I use for my aquariums. So finally pH, which stands for power or potential of hydrogen. And simply put, it's a measurement of your water to determine if your aquarium is acidic or alkaline. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral. Below 7 is classed as acidic, and over 7 is classed as alkaline. pH is important, as if your water is too acidic or alkaline for your fish, this can harm them and make them susceptible to stress and disease. As a general rule, most freshwater fish are happy between the pH of 6.5 and 7.5. And saltwater fish prefer a pH of 8 and up. But make sure you do your research on your fish to see what pH they should be kept in. Generally the captive raised fish are more tolerant to wider ranges and you should have a good degree of confidence that the fish at your local shop would be acclimated to your area's tap water. But always check with the shopkeeper or your breeder. So thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like the, like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already, uh, drop a comment if you've got any questions and I'll see you in the next one.